Hi there, Chris Fox here. I know this looks a bit like a mess, but uh, this is a 14 EL system that I am proving for a locomotive at Halton County Radio Railway. Uh, it's a Plymouth locomotive and it's never had a 14 EL system in it. And since we decided that we were going to put this system in, let me run through it and show you. Uh, I have it in my shop here because I was proving and adding some stuff to it so that it'll, it'll work more uh, safely than the original system does. So in a 14EL, you have your brake stand, you have your independent and automatic, and then coming from the compressor, you have an M3 feed valve, which drops the pressure from 140 PSI to 90 PSI or 70 PSI, depending if you want to move this for passenger or freight. We're going to run at a 90 PSI. And I've added a regulator instead of another feed valve. I've added a regulator to it for the independent pressure at 45 PSI. Moving along from there, you go to the distributing valve, which is a 6KA distributing valve, which is this and its tank. And from there, it goes to a brake cylinder which is over there. Now that's an RDC brake cylinder and I have RDC gauges because that's just what I have. Brake cylinder is brake cylinder and gauges are gauges. So <clears throat> the thing that I've added to this is I've added a dead man. There's the dead man pedal, system, timing tank, and vent system. Okay. Uh, this is your warning whistle. Okay, so your RSC or your RSC reset, I have on the crude alert, alerter here, and I have a charging button, which is here, and we'll go through all that. So, <clears throat> the way the 14EL system was designed originally in the first place was if it was in the running position, like it is here, and it had an undesired emergency, a car separation, anything like that, you literally had to take the handle and put it in the lap like that for it to stop blowing down your system. It did not have a brake uh, pipe cutoff or a main res cutoff system for it. There was no lockover or anything, lockout, lockover system for it at all. So <clears throat> I had to come up with something for this. Being that I put a dead man in on it, means that it'll blow down the brake pipe, sure, but then if you're incapacitated, how are you going to move this to lap? And if you move it to lap, it stops everything. Anyways, the positions on the 14EL system, if you're not uh, f familiar with it, is you have release, or running actually, release is over here, and it's actually release and charging. You charge in the running position as well. You have holding, which I'll go through in a, in a minute, I'll show you. Lap and uh, application, which is, okay. Being this is a lap valve, means you have to bring it back to lap regardless of what you're doing with it. So if we go to release, You have it in release, everything is released right now. So, and you're coming along, you want to stop the train, you put it into lap, you take a bite of air, you let it do what it's gonna do. You can see how the brake cylinder pressure came up. Take a little bit more if you want. Oh, that's too much. You can release it a bit. Yeah, okay. So, that's how these brake valves work. Now, a couple of things with this is kind of neat. You can go to the, you can go to holding, which is the first notch to the left here. And what it does is it will release your train brake, but leave your locomotive a fly without the use of the independent. Okay, so now it's in holding. Now, if you want to put into running, that will release and charge the system. 
if you want to just put the locomotive brakes on, grab the independent and you have independent brakes. Okay, so like I was saying before, with the dead man pedal, which I added, it has a timing circuit in it and a warning whistle. So what this has in it, the whole dead man system, is I have a regulator set at 60 PSI right now off of the main res, goes through this regulator, goes through an H5B relay valve, which means that if you seize 30 PSI, or actually this is a 25 PSI, if it sees 25 PSI of brake cylinder pressure, it will stop the flow to the dead man anyways. So as long as there is more than 25 PSI of brake cylinder pressure in there, you can take your foot off the dead man and walk away because the brakes are on. At least 25 PSI of brake cylinder pressure. So from there, it goes to a regulator and a P whistle with a solenoid valve, through a check valve, into a timing circuit, and into two, past two pressure switches. One pressure switch is for the um, P whistle and the timing circuit, and the other one, which is the main one, which is right here, it's for your dump valve, and your dump valve is over here next to the number eight dump valve, and it's right there, and that gets rid of your brake pipe. So to demonstrate this, uh, you would <clears throat> put your foot on the pedal, release, get rid of your, get rid of your uh, brake cylinder pressure, and <clears throat> you can release, take your foot off the pedal, and the system is charging, gives you 20 seconds, and then you will get a crew alert. Okay. Another 20 seconds after that, the system will... The system's dumped it's in emergency okay the reason why it's not blowing down i've added the lockover system because other than that you would have to put this in lap because i got around that by putting a check valve or a solenoid valve here right after on the charge line from the brake valve and from the brake so or from the brake pipe or from the brake pipeline from the distributing valve, I have a uh, solenoid valve here as well. What that does is, these are normally open. When it sees a, an emergency pressure, this pressure switch here, being that it is, it, it'll, it looks for no pressure in the, in the brake pipe, or 30 PSI is what I have that set at. If it goes below 30 PSI, this valve closes, that valve closes bottles the air in this system here. So this is isolated from that. Okay. <clears throat> what that does is it allows a non-backflow th from the main res through the brake valve and backwards through the um, distributing valve. Anyways, it sounds complicated, but and it is, but anyways, you add that and you add that and it stops it, which it has right now. So if you've stopped any air moving through this thing, you wouldn't have any air going to the brake cylinder because this thing is your brain and controls the air to the brake cylinder. So you have to grab air from another spot, which I've done here. I've taken it from the M3 feed valve here. Come down through here and across here. I've added this valve here, which is a normally closed one. So when the system sees it and it goes into emergency, this valve opens, allows the air through, goes through this double check valve here, which has a shuttle inside. So it pushes the shuttle over, the air goes this way and goes into the brake cylinder and everything's happy. So now it's in emergency. So you have 90 PSI brake cylinder pressure, no brake pipe, 
you still have equalizing res. So to recover from this, you would go from release to emergency. If you're in emergency, you go to emergency. Fantastic. You step your foot on the pedal, you recover your PC. Then you move your handle to charging. I can take my foot off the pedal. Anyway, I know it's a bit complicated and it looks a bit messy, but that's going in locomotive 301 at the Halton County Radio Railway. And uh, I'll show you it when it's installed. Thanks for watching.